What is up everybody, Dan Dan the Fireman here. We're gonna be talking about something you guys have been asking for a long time. What bike should I get? Should I get a naked bike, sport bike, cruiser bike, adventure touring bike, all these different bikes. But we're gonna be going over the top five cruisers for beginner riders. So this is something very important. And the reason why I'm going over this one because I think cruisers are amazing for beginner riders. Now remember this list isn't all encompassing. It's not gonna grab the bike that you probably wanna get, but I want you to understand why I chose these bikes and why I think they're actually pretty good. So first of all, they have a low seat height, which means that most all new riders will be able to flat foot them. And really this translates into new riders feel more comfortable and confident. And that's really important for a new rider because you have this helmet fire going on. You got your brain going crazy, trying to figure out all these different things. And now you're adding, you know, not being confident or comfortable on the bike to that list of problems that you're having. So let's not do that to ourselves. And another thing with most cruisers is they are tuned in a way that the power delivery is very even and predictable and this really does help you out. It's a lot different like sport bikes where they are tuned that once you hit a certain number of RPMs, you tap into that power of the engine and you can really jump forward on you. But not so much with cruisers and from the bottom end to the top end, the power delivery is predictable for the new rider. All right, so let's jump off of number five. That is exactly why you guys are here. And number five is gonna be the Harley Davidson Iron 883. Yes, yes, I understand you guys are saying, why a Harley for a new rider? They're very expensive. That is very true. You are paying for that bar and badge tax when it comes to having a Harley. But I know a lot of you guys really jumped into the cruiser market because you saw a Sportster or saw some type of Harley Davidson. So that's why we're here so might as well talk about the one that you can jump into from being a new rider so it's powered by an 883 cc v-twin evo engine but don't let the 800 cc scare you this bike only has about 50 horsepower to it and the evolution engine is one of the most reliable engines harley has ever made this is a motorcycle that can grow with you as well thanks to the large aftermarket support of harley davidson motorcycles guys there's so much stuff out there i always talk about how harleys are like the ar-15 of the motorcycle world. You can add so much stuff to it. You can take away, you can change the looks, you can do all these different things. You have a massive support group of aftermarket parts. Also, if you feel like you're outgrowing your 883, you can get a 1200 plus kit in the aftermarket area. So number four, the Suzuki TU250X. We use a few of these out here out on the range at Riders on MTC, and these things are pretty much bulletproof. They are insane, so that'd be really good for a new rider. They're also 250 cc, so it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to ride. So they are affordable, they have that Japanese reliability and completely beginner friendly. It's a wonderful motorcycle to get into if one wishes to have a bike that is in the same ballpark yet completely different from the Honda Rebel 300, which we might be talking about later. So this thing only weighs about 300 pounds and it does have standard control. So you're gonna have those mid controls. It's gonna be a little bit easier for you to ride. This motorcycle is one that will inspire confidence in any new rider. And really it does. When I'm out here on the range and I'm watching these people ride these motorcycles, especially these lower CCs and then the TU, I, like I said, I absolutely love riding it. I notice that they feel comfortable right away. And if I threw out that Iron 883 for a brand new spanking rider or some other big bike, it would have caused more problems. Like I mentioned, having that helmet fire, this is really gonna help you out when it comes to being relaxed and really enjoy what you're riding around on. Now this is a 250 CC bike, so it's gonna be really good in town, not necessarily on the interstate I don't recommend taking them on there, but it's going to be really good for you, you know, getting from home to work, work from home if there's no interstate or highways that are being taken and it's mainly in town stuff. This is all you're going to need. So number three and two is going to be a tie between the Honda Shadow and the Yamaha Bolt. And the reason why I chose this is because these are typically going to be the bikes that you see out on the floor if you're not at a Harley or Indian dealership, okay? So these are things that you're really going to see and it's going to really stand out because they look like full-fledged big bikes, but they're really not. They're really not. They match a lot of what the Sportster has to offer. So they both offer around 45 horsepower, which the Iron 83 has 50 horsepower. So it's roughly in the same ballpark. You also pay less because you're not paying for that bar and badge tax. You're actually getting a little bit more because you're paying for the Yamaha and Honda reliability. So if you wanna get that big styling of, you know, that really nice low to the ground, good rake and trail from a Harley Davidson, but you wanna pay less and then have a little bit more reliability, these are the two bikes that I recommend for you. Now the Honda Shadow is shaft driven, so that's gonna be a little bit different from a Harley, and the Yamaha Bolt will be belt driven, which is a lot similar to what a Harley is. Belts and shafts and chains, those are all the primary drives. There's some good and there's some bad when it comes to picking one over the other, okay? And I'm not gonna go in depth in that, but I'm gonna tell you right now, everybody, having a belt driven bike 
is amazing, has really good reliability, and then also will last a lot longer than a chain with no real adjustments needed. So number one is my wife's bike. I absolutely love this bike. It's the Honda Rebel 500. This is the predictable golden goose of beginner motorcycles, okay? The Honda Rebel. No motorcycle has gotten more people started into the two-wheeled power sports than Honda Rebel. Recently updated from the Rebel 250 as a couple of years ago, these bikes are liquid-cooled, reliable, and have mid controls, and they are powerful enough to ride on the interstate, yet approachable enough with 39 horsepower. So there is the Rebel 300 and Rebel 500. It does come with ABS or no ABS those are different options and recently in the 2020s which kind of upsets me because I just bought a 2018 Honda Rebel uh, it comes with LED lights it comes with a better dash it comes with a bunch of different options compared to what uh, I have here it comes with a new indicator too for the gears so that's pretty cool we also have some of these bikes out here at Ryder Arizona MTC and I've seen them out on the range and once again they're just like the TU250 but now we're in the 300 and 500 range fuel injected so you you don't really have to worry about a carburetor. This is honestly my go-to beginner bike if I was going to have somebody start riding a bike. I would put somebody on a Rebel 300, make sure it has ABS, and I'd make sure I have some engine and crash guards so that if something does happen, they're able to just pick the bike up and go. Let me know down in the comments which bike you learned how to ride on or which bike you recommend as a cruiser bike for new riders. With that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe. I'll see you guys around.